lot more school spirit than we've ever seen. I guess as you can see, and a lot of younger players on this year's team, so it's just been a lot of fun. By the way, you know, I, this is my tie. Is that my tie? Did I give you that last year? No. Not last time I checked. No, I guess not. No, I have one just like it. But anyway, you guys are uh, great spokesmen for your school. Thanks for coming by at halftime. Good luck in the second half. He's got the edge so far, but there's another half to go. Okay, uh, let's go. All let's right. go, Al Brennan. Woo! Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks to our guests, Ricky Doyle, Veronica Flores, representing their respective high schools tonight as our reporters. Mercer Allen with a 30 to 16 halftime lead in the championship game. Let's go back to the studio. Bob Harwood with an update on sports. Bob? Tony, thanks again. Mount Vernon and Mercer Island fighting it out for the AAA boys title. Earlier tonight, we brought you Federal Way's thrilling comeback victory. That was over Central Valley in the girls' AAA championship game. Congratulations to the Eagles of Federal Way. Now the girls' and boys' AA titles being decided tonight at the Tacoma Dome. West Valley and Prosser in the girls' matchup tonight. The Prosser Mustangs in white. Some great ball movement here to set up Meredith Walker. She led Prosser tonight with 14. A big night for the Kalis family. Andrea playing for Central Valley in the AAA title game her twin sister Angela leading West Valley tonight with 17. The Lady Eagles put it away in the fourth quarter. Keisha Sowers drives and gets the basket. She finished with 11. West Valley wins the double-A title 61-44 over Prosser. O'Day and Cheney, boys double-A title game. The Fighting Irish of O'Day trying to become just the seventh team in state history to complete an undefeated season. Carrie McDonald hits the jumper and O'Day is off to a quick start. Cheney staying close. Pat Stifler drives through the O'Day D and gets the layup to fall. O'Day led it by 10 at the break. The Irish pull away late in the second half. Douglas Wren hits the tough turnaround jumper. 59-46 O'Day completing a perfect season. They win the AA championship. Now the University of Washington women's basketball team opened up the NCAA tournament at Lawrence, Kansas tonight and took on number six Vanderbilt. The Huskies kept it close for a while but fell by a 74-62 final score. Jamie Red paced the Huskies with 21 points. Washington ends the season with a record of 17 and 11. Sonics coach George Carl and fellow former Tar Heel Sam Perkins on hand to watch North Carolina coach Dean Smith pick up win number 877. North Carolina taking on Colorado. Coach Smith becomes the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history. Antoine Jameson leading the way with 19 points. 73-56 the final score. The Heels win it. Dean Smith coaches his way into the college basketball record books. Second round scoreboard now, East Regional, Carolina and California moving on. Southeast winners, number one, Kansas and Arizona still alive. Midwest Region, UCLA by 13 and Iowa State with the upset over Cincinnati. St. Joe's needed OT to beat Boston College, national champion Kentucky with a six-point win over Iowa. We are at the half of the Mount Vernon Mercer Island AAA State Championship game. The second half is just minutes away. Up next, though, a big day for the Mariners and the big fella on the mound, Randy Sam Johnson, the unit. Mariners. Looking sharp in his longest outing of the spring so far. We'll have the highlights. That's coming up next. Underhand toss for the fours on Mike Matheny. Respect, trust. We have to earn it every day with every customer. Being a technician at Greg's is a profession, not a temporary job. Save $20 on a major tune-up. Call 879-GREGS. I personally guarantee the quality of every job. Just because somebody moves away, he doesn't stop being my friend, you know. Some of my best friends in the whole world I may not recognize right off the bat, you know, because I haven't seen them in 20 years. I still talk to them all the time. I guess I have to say doctor talk. That's why I think GTE is such a good value. I can call anyone in the country for 14 cents a minute any time I want. Well, Randy. Because I don't have any off-peak friends. <laughs> On the next Highlander, immortals know how to play the game. Everyone carries a sword. <gasps> Everyone takes heads. We fight or we die. But someone is changing the rules. Please, put up your sword. You must be the new prophet. Forcing Duncan McLeod to expose the truth. This guy's a fraud. He's killing them off. Before Richie's fate is sealed. We were meant for war. On the next Highlander. Sunday night at 9 on Cairo TV 7. Then hurry to Jerry Solomon's Used Car Superstore, where inventory is overstocked with trade-ins, 400 units, discount prices, two locations. Only at Jerry Solomon's Used Car Superstore. Stop by today.
Okay, now we got the clock set for 45 seconds. Okay, we're watching. And the second half is just minutes away. We'll send you back to Tony, Bill, and Brent after we talk some baseball. Randy Johnson back on the mound against the Brewers today after hitting JT Snow in the eye just a few days ago. Johnson bounced back with a solid performance. A Peoria Stadium record today of 11,111 to watch the performance. And Johnson got plenty of run support from the big Mariner bats this afternoon. Edgar Martinez has smashed down the left field line. Two run homer for Edgar, second in as many days, third of the spring. Mariners led it 2-0 in the first. Johnson's numbers impressive. Three plus innings, four strikeouts, including the freeze on Mark Mieske. The kind of effort the M's left-hander should be pleased with. The skipper pretty happy as well this afternoon. More Edgar Muscle in inning number three. His second blast in as many at-bats. This one a solo shot. Number four in Arizona for Martinez now, and the M's are up by a 4-0 score. Jay Buhner was the only Mariner slugger still searching for a Cactus League home run, and the search concluded with that swing of the bat in inning number five. It made it 8-4 Mariners. They went on to win it by an 11-5 score. I felt extremely comfortable out there. My velocity was, was getting there, and uh, and I faced more batters. So uh, each and every time I go out there, I'm hoping to make uh, leaps and bounds of improvement, and I have at this point. Yes, I just swing at the bat good. Had a good game yesterday, and another another good one today. So it's it's good to finally get in the groove. You are up to date on the rest of the day in sports. Plenty more coming your way. We're going to send you back now to the Kingdom for the second half of our AAA Boys Championship game. Tony Ventrella, Bill Rocky, and Brent Ringenbach, take it away. Back live at the Kingdom. Halftime score. Yeah, that's the halftime score. Mercer Allen up over Mount Vernon, 30 to 16. You know, we had the all uh, academic award for the uh, girls game as the Everett High School uh, team, but for the boys, it's Gonzaga Prep winning the Academic Achievement Award with a grade point average of 3.584. And Zaga Prep boys basketball team with a grade point average of over 3.5. You know, earlier this evening, I uh, had a chance to talk with Steve Matson from the uh, Dairy Farmers and uh, talk to Steve about, uh, well, frankly, how great it is to be a part of the WIAA championship. It is, Tony. You know, we've uh, been involved now with the WIAA for the, you know, it's really our first year being involved with them and, and the first time with basketball. It's just an exciting time to be here and the same events happening in Tacoma and last weekend with the eight championships uh, also in Tacoma and it's just a great time for high school sports. I know you played at Lincoln High in 74, 75, and 76. Won it in 75. Almost won in 76 or should have won it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you corrected me on that. Uh, but it's got to be because of that. Uh, you come out here and you must get a feeling of maybe a little uh, shaky knees or something when you get this close to the title game. It, it's exciting. I, I tell you, you know, just sitting here and watching, the, you know, the communities come in and, 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 and the students come in. And I, I can just sense, I, I know what the players are feeling right now. And it's, it's really, a, a, you know, the climax for their high school. A lot of, the, you know, these seniors that are playing for the last time. Uh, this is a big game. And, it, and it's fun to be a part of it. You know, we talked about this during the football game. I find this to be true more so than not, and that is that the grade point averages, the spirit in the schools that have teams that are effective and good seems to be better all the way around. Absolutely. I think, you know, when the kids are involved in, in uh, extracurricular activities, uh, whether sports or some other activities, we find they, they work harder, they're more disciplined, and, and they perform better. And, and, and really, this is about, you know, uh, building better citizens. And uh, we're excited to be a part of that. All right, there's the score at halftime, 30 to 16. Mercer Allen ahead of uh, Mount Vernon. And of course, the dairy farmers doing a lot financially and uh, personally to help uh, make this such a terrific tournament. Judy Jennings from the WIAA, executive board president. You guys work so hard. And actually, this part is easy for you, isn't it? Well, relatively easy. This is the fun part for us. The executive board uh, doesn't really have a, a role in actually putting on the tournament. We sponsor the tournament and help provide the regulatory rules that go with it. But it's exciting to see all of these kids having such a wonderful time and working so hard uh, to get to this point. And there's tremendous enthusiasm for people who are out there watching now whose kids maybe have grown up and, uh, uh, and graduated years ago. They don't have kids in high school. It's a positive thing for them to see events like this because kids today really are terrific and really are trying to learn and better themselves. Absolutely. And I think that's something that's proven by, uh, by these games. Now, you're not really rooting for anybody here, are you? No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I think I'm excited to see how well both teams are doing. It's been a, a pleasure to be at the tournament this year with the quality of ball that's been played. We've had a terrific time. Next year, I won't, I won't ask you to comment on 
4 a and triple a but it's going to be a, a little more work uh, for everybody involved for next year isn't it? yes there is uh, we're working right now to plan for that so that when it happens it will go smoothly and everybody will have as great a time as they're having now judy great job again thanks for stopping by at halftime great uh mercer island is behind but hey stranger things have happened you saw what happened in the I, first game tonight i saw the girls game so right. mercer knows? island is ahead is what i meant thanks for yeah, coming with us uh, thank judy. you we'll see you later have a good time in the second half let's toss it over to brent uh for a second half comment and an interview brent thanks tony i'm with coach mac frazier of mount vernon coach not probably the situation you want to be in right now what'd you tell your team at halftime well, we need to shoot a heck of a lot better. We've had lay-ins that we've missed and free throws that we've missed. We just haven't played very hard, and I'm, I'm not sure why. We just haven't been aggressive, and that's what we're working on. Well, you guys found yourself down last night against Ferris, came back and won that game, so your team obviously has the ability to come back. Well, they have a lot of heart, and they know exactly what's ahead of them. It's going to be tough, but I believe our kids can do it. Okay, good luck, Coach. Thank you. Tony, back to you. All right, thanks, Brent. Great job. Stick around over there and see what you can find in the second half. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with some first half stats and second half championship action in a minute. The word has gone out to every future shop across the country. Everything. To every department. Everything. For three days, all home car and portable audio is on sale. Like an RCA 40-watt high-powered three-disc mini system with double cassette, digital tuner, and remote only $179. So if you want to save big, there's just one word to remember. Everything? Everything is on sale at Future Shop now through Saturday. Did consumer credit counseling help you? I was falling behind in the bills, and managing money has always been a struggle for me. Consumer credit offered free counseling, and we put together a plan to get me and my life back on track. I wanted to buy a house, but every month my paycheck was already spent. With consumer credit's help, we prepared a workable budget to eventually own my own home. If you need help, call consumer credit counseling today. Our services are free. of tonight's game are sponsored with pride by the Dairy Farmers of Washington. First half highlights, Mercer Island jumping out to a pretty good lead. Mobley inside. Let's get out of the highlights and go to live action because they've started. Second half underway early in the uh, second half. 30 to 16, Mercer Island with the lead. Interesting thing for the Islanders, Tony, two, two of those sophomores, Josh Fisher with nine points in the first half. Elliot Prase Freeman, eight, two sophomores leading the way in the state championship. Brian Brown, only two points in the first half. But of course, as Coach Peppel told Brent, they aren't sophomores anymore. They played 29 games. They're juniors. <laughs> oh boy, they're going to the boards now. Inside they go for Brian Whitehead, trying to force the offensive action a bit. As Mount Vernon scores first here in the second half, they trail 30 to 18. Now the pressure's on. Almost steal the ball. They're battling for it. No referees call. I like that. They're letting them play. Brian Brown, 15 footer. Yes. The first three or four minutes of this quarter are going to be crucial for Mount Vernon. They've, they've got to get something going right now. They can't let Mercer Island continue to do what they did in the first half. Brown with four points in the ball game. Islanders lead at 32-18. They've just started the second half of play. Mount Vernon in the white uniform still inbounds the ball. Don Holloman, number 21, a guard, six-footer, senior. Gets sitting in the lead. Back to Holloman. Almost carried the ball. He's at the top of the key. Inside it goes, and a beautiful pass to Eric Kruger, who's there for the layup. Great pass. Great shot by Eric Kruger. Mount Vernon coming out a little more aggressive, I think, in this half. I'm sure they had a little talk in there at halftime and 
and Mac wants him to play a little different. And they get another turnover here by Mercer Island traveling. Freeman called for the travel. Tom Vernon ball coming out of the backcourt. Not too much pressure being put on. Freeman stays back there with Holloman, but he gets it over the half-court line. Holloman setting up a play. Comes left side, and Freeman knocks it out. Now Vernon in possession of the ball. They trail by 12, 32-20. Early second half. And again, they're not used to this. This is this is new to them. There's Kruger driving the lane, shoots, scores. And his foul. A potential three. Well, wait a minute. Or did he? Here's a replay. Foul was on number 34, Tyler Bessaker. Yep, Foul on Tyler Bessaker. Team foul. Nice drive to the basket by Eric Kruger. Hits the bucket. He'll go to the line, the lead Josh down Fisher to 10 right now. He can get it under Fisher 10 for the Fisher. first time in a long time. And this is exactly what Eric Mac Frazier wants to see happen to start out this third quarter. Well, I think you're going to see him going to the hole more, trying to draw the fouls. They're going to have to do something to wake up the offense. His free throw off the front of the iron. They had an awful lot of trouble hitting free throws in the first half. That continues. First around by 10, they got the ball. Can I say Freeman? Over the 10-second line to Brian Brown. Brown only with four points in tonight's ball game so far. But he heated up in a hurry last night at 19 in the fourth quarter for a total of 31. There's Fisher, number 52. Bounce pass to Brown. Brown back out to, on top to Jordan. Fisher is going to take a shot. Now he's driving. Stops. Back out it goes. And for a second, Jordan almost lost the ball. He's got it. He turns. He goes in for the three-footer, and he's fouled. Jordan with a nice drive, draws the foul on Brian Whitehead. He fouls at number 32, Brian Whitehead. Whitehead's got two now. Nobody in real foul trouble yet at all. I think Brian Brown has three. Only one over two so far. Five and a half to go, third quarter. Ten-point lead for Mercer Island. Make it ten. Because he missed that free throw. <laughs> I think it's real interesting that so far the two seniors, Dylan Mobley and Brian Brownweb, have had great yeah, tournaments. Have not been the big factors so far for the Islanders. It's been the younger guys. Second free throw good. Islanders up 11. That's Kruger. Ball knocked away. Tied up. No ball, possession arrows. Possession arrows in favor of Mount Vernon. Yeah, so they keep the ball anyway. They're definitely being more aggressive here. Kruger driving to the hole that time. I'm sure that was discussed at the half. Well, I bet you it was. They had 16 points in the first half. They've outscored the Islanders 6 to 2. I'm sure Mac Frazier told them they're not playing their normal game. They did not play their normal game in the first half. And, and I'm sure he wants them to get back to what they've done all season. Stolen by Brown. Brown almost lost control. He stops, he shoots, it's good. You know, Brian, known last night for his outside shot, but he likes to drive to the basket, too. He did it right there. And, He's pretty good inside as well. Well, he is. 13-point lead for Mercer Island. Mount Vernon trying to answer that. They can't afford to not at this point. There's the three, and it's good by Nick Lynn. Nick. A big one. 35-25. Yeah, Islanders come right back. Mobley driving. Five-footer. Blocked. Knocked away nicely by Brian Whitehead. Rebound comes down to Mount Vernon. Full court pass to Leafy. Loses it off his hands, and it'll be the Islanders' ball. Pace is picking up a little bit here. So far in the third quarter, a little bit of a different game. Teams are starting to run more. You know, we didn't discuss that. Who would have the advantage in a in a run game and a running game? Well, I think Mercer Island would love to get into that kind of game and not have to worry about attacking the Mount Vernon big guys inside. Islanders up 10 with four minutes to go, third quarter. Rossi Freeman puts it on the floor, and he's fouled by Holloman. 
Fouls on number 21. Don Holloman is. He's got three out of them. Team foul number two. Elliott driving to the basket. Just a little slap there from Don Holloman. Brian Brown shouting out instructions here. Inbounds the ball. It was almost a surprise. The Mobley Brown with a long three off the mark. Rebound Fisher fights for it. Out of bounds off Fisher. It'll be Mount Vernon ball. Great effort by Josh. But it went off his fingertips. Grant Leap will inbound the ball. He's going to have to step it up here in the third and fourth quarters. They haven't been able to get it into Grant that much. I'm sure they want to do that a lot more. But so far, really, he hasn't been much of a factor. Leap with the turnaround underneath. He's got foul. I say that, and he drives to the basket and picks up a foul just like he did in the first quarter coming out. And they went to him almost every time down the court to start the game, but they kind of got away from that. Team foul number two. Grant Leap at the line. Leap shooting. Now well, Leap's going to have to make these free throws, something that his team did not do in the first half, and he does. 35-26, Mercer Island by nine. Grant Leap has nine points in the ball game. Makes both free throws. He's cut the lead to eight. There is an official timeout. 35-27, Mercer Island. We'll be right back. Friends, what do you get when you put Post Bow RV together with the Tacoma Mall? You get the biggest spring RV sale in our history. If you're looking for a motorhome, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or camper, any maker, model, new or used, this is the sale you've been waiting for. Friends, it just doesn't get any better than this. Come see us at Tacoma Mall. But hurry, it all ends March 23rd. Holdsbo RV will save you a ton of money. Some days I'm so hungry I'll eat anything that's not nailed down. Fast, cheap, easy, now. Other days, I want something that tastes great and really satisfies. A real meal. And it's worth the ride to get what I want. Cruise to Taco Time and grab hold of chicken, beef, or veggie wraps. Each more than a pound of stuff you love. Guacamole, sour cream, dressing, cheddar, stuffed in aroma tomato tortilla. Fresh, great taste you'll love. Taco Time wraps. Well, if I had money, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd go downtown, buy a Ford truck or two. I'm crazy about a Ford truck. It's truck month at your Northwest Ford dealer. Drive home the best-selling Ford Ranger with 1500 cash back. That's 1500 back on any Ranger loaded the way you want it. Check out these great deals during Ford Truck Month. I'm gonna buy me a Ford truck and cruise it up and down the road. Truck month at your Northwest Ford dealer, home of five of the ten best sellers in America. Again. Woo! 35-27, your score with 3.50 to go in the third quarter. The Islanders with the lead and the basketball. Crossay Freeman to Brian Brown. Brown back to Freeman. Mount Vernon's crowd was quiet in that first half. Starting to wake up a little bit here. Well, they are, they are. That's they, like, they like what they've seen so far in this quarter. From the corner, Mobley's bomb is off the mark. Rebound, a couple of shots more. They're missing both. Mount Vernon comes down with the ball. Kruger's got it. Over to Collins. Collins control. Bounce pass inside to Leap. There's a foul. Might be on uh, Fisher. If it is, it'll be three. Josh doesn't like that call. No, he doesn't. Josh Fisher against third personal foul. Team foul number three. Actually, you know, I'm... I've never seen a guy that did like that. No. Thing. I'm trying Very to think rarely. Back. I'm trying to think back when someone has uh, thanked an official for getting a foul call. Nice play by Collins, but it didn't go. Leap with the rebound. Back up of the reverse lay, and he's fouled again. Great rebound by Grant Leap there. He's kind of caught underneath the basket. Goes up underneath. He's got to get aggressive. He knows he's got to start taking control here for the Bulldogs if they're going to come back and win this. First free throw is good. He's cut the lead to seven. That's the closest this game's been in quite a while, Bill. I don't remember when uh, it was under 10, actually, last. 11 points for Leap. 
Well, I think it's what, what Mount Vernon wanted to set out to do again in the first three or four minutes of the third quarter. I think they've accomplished it. They're starting to make Mercer all in wonder if the lead's gonna lead's gonna stay. And, and right now, this is as aggressive as Mount Vernon's been the whole game. That's true. Now they almost get another steal. Knocked out of bounds by Kruger. It'll be Islanders' ball, but it was close. Brian Brown, 32, will inbound the ball for his team. They lead by six, 35-29 Islanders, 2.55 to go third quarter. In it goes, Fisher shot blocked by Leaf. Foul, whistle. Ooh. Who's? Oh, that was late tough. call. That was a tough one. That was a late call. Grant Leaf inside. Thought he had the block. Second first in foul on number 30, Grant Leaf. Team foul number And once again, another guy who disagrees with the call. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Actually, Fisher was uh, upset because he maybe maybe thought they were calling a charge on him. He's the one that had the look on his face. Well, he missed the first free throw. Mosher Allen by six. Fisher trying to make it seven. He does. It's going to take Josh out here back in. Russell comes in. Fisher goes out. Yeah, Russell spent a lot of time in this lineup. Well, again, it's Ed's rotation. He he likes to run these guys in and out. He doesn't have any problems with getting them in there, even these young guys. Oh, big block there by number 44, Ben Jordan. A foul is called on him, and uh, once again, on the other side of the court, same problem. Looked like a clean block, but wasn't, but uh, let's see. Once again, Mount Vernon trying to go inside. Ooh, that looks like a pretty nice block. Yeah, it's a tough call. I would have called uh, maybe on the body for the other guy that was under there, 33. But at any rate, 36-29, seven-point lead for Mercer Island, and... Uh, Darby's at the line again. Well, Darby, Brian uh, Whitehead's trying to shrink that lead to six if he can do it. First free throw is good. It's 36-30. Seven points in the ball game for Whitehead, the big sophomore. Second one also good. 36-31. This is what they did not do in the first half. Eight points for Whitehead. First round lead down to five. 2.40 to go third quarter. Here come the Islanders. Brian Brown puts it on the floor. Cross court pass to Plasse Freeman. Drives the lane. Off the glass. Good. Just a nice shot by Elliot Plasse Freeman. Taking the ball to the basket. Gets the nice roll. 38-31 Islanders. Ten points for the sophomore. Oh, look at Kruger go down the lane. His shot's off the mark, leaps on the floor. What happened? We got a jump ball, possessions in favor of Mercer Island. And then they'll hold on to the possession. You know, this is really picking up, Tony. The intensity is really picking up now. They know they're going for it. Here we go. Kruger drive into the basket. Everybody, a bunch of guys, Grant Leap going up for the rebound. Great play. It's a great play by Kruger, great idea, but it went off the mark and the Islanders have the ball back. Here comes Cosse Freeman, drives down the lane, a little finger roll, that's off the mark. Grant Leap with a pass that's stolen by Brown. Mercer Allen's got it back again. He just kind of flung it up there, and Brown grabbed it away. There's almost a steal by Fisher. mopey has got it back inside of Freeman, underneath it goes to Russell, his shot no good. Great block by Brian Whitehead. Matt Vernon's defensive pressure really picking up here in the second half. Russell with the basket, Brian Whitehead with the block. Now Vernon with possession. They're down seven with 1.41 to go in the third quarter. That's Collins, number 20. Around the right side of the key, looking to set up an offensive play here. Back it goes to Nick Lynn. They had the big shot in last night's semifinal. Out to Kruger. Across and inside to Whitehead. White drives and... Call a foul on Brian Brown and Mercer Island. That's number four. Number 
Bob Fernand is uh, getting the job done. The face of Fred Brown. Looking a little bit concerned here. 38-31 Islanders with a minute 18 to go in the third quarter. We'll be right back. What's the matter? Couldn't you sleep? Did you think I wouldn't find out? Is this about the ring I gave you? Listen, a cubic zirconia looks just like a real diamond. Is this about my time in prison? You drank the last of the milk. Got milk? First in the air for Western Washington, Chopper 7 and Cairo News introduce you to the clearest pictures from the sky. With more dynamic visuals. Firefighters continue to battle the blaze that started just... More detail. Right over the top of with about a thousand feet. A steadier image and a 360 degree view. The whole back side of the house is engulfed in flames. Pictures you won't see anywhere else. Chopper 7 to News Days, we're on our way to the scene. Bringing you closer to the story. Chopper 7 and Cairo News. Hey kid, <laughs> listen to your godfather and I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm giving you free my new dessert pizza topped with M&M's when you buy a Godfather's Pizza Family Fun Pack. Kids? Where'd it go? Godfather's Pizza's new Family Fun Pack includes a medium specialty pizza and a medium one-topping pizza for just $14.99. And for a limited time, get a free dessert pizza topped with M&M's. Pizza, the way pizza was meant to be. Do it. 118 to go, third quarter. Islanders up seven. But Mount Vernon's got the ball as they try to cut it to five. Kruger at the top of the key. Over to Collins. Down deep. The shot is good. The three-pointer buried by Nick Lynn. I tell you, Tony, if they can get the ball to Nick Lynn and he can he can get open, he can hit that shot. He can turn this thing around. Fisher with an answer off the top of the glass, a little bit high, and he's fouled. Mercer Island doing the right thing, trying to come right back and stave off the possible momentum by Mount Vernon. We're under a minute to go, third quarter. Mount Vernon has cut the lead to four. Team foul number four, foul three. Fisher shooting. Who's that one on? It was on uh, Grant Leap. He's got three on him. Fisher's at the free throw line, makes the first of two. He's got 11 points in the ball game. Islanders up five. Make it six. 40 to 34, Mercer Island. Final minute, third quarter. Here come the Bulldogs. Collins. Down deep. Lynn's got the ball again. I have a feeling they might try to get it to him some more. That's Kruger, 25, at the baseline. Turning, looking for a shot. Bounce pass inside Fisher. Nice move. Lays it up and in. Great drive there, Tony. Scott Collins, left hand. Cuts the lead to four now, 30 seconds to go. The Islanders a little concerned right now. Collins with six points in the ball game. His team is only down four. 20 seconds to go, third quarter. Islanders looking to score before this quarter runs out to maybe keep that momentum that they had so much of in the first half. With Basse Freeman. Like Ed on the right side, down the baseline. Here. He's going to shoot off the back side of the backboard. But back up with it is Will Russell. Great rebound by Will Russell there. Gets the basket. Islanders still with a six-point lead. But they're hanging.